All right, if we make our way back to our seats here. <laughs> and if you would with me, open up your Bibles to the book of Mark. The book of Mark, chapter number four. Chapter number four. Uh, we're continuing our study in the book of Mark, and we're focusing on the actions of Jesus. And so we, last week we left off uh, talking about how Jesus called the twelve, and he called the twelve apostles, and, and we talked about discipleship, and the importance of discipleship, how, how God created the church to reach the lost world, and then to raise disciples, to teach them all things that God has commanded us, right? That is the model that God has laid out for us. And so we talked about that last week and how, and how Jesus taught them and how he spent time with them and how they learned from him, right? That, that's, that, that's what you and I should do. We, we should find somebody, a new Christian, who, who needs guidance and teach them and learn from them and, and, and uh, have them learn from you and spend time with them. And so that's what Jesus was about. He spent so much time uh, with 12. Um, and, and, and as we focus on the ministry of Jesus and his actions, uh, we're, we're skipping over a little bit. Uh, we're skipping over uh, the parables uh, in Mark chapter 4 as we focus on the actions and what Jesus did and why he did what he did. Um, and uh, a lot has happened so far, right? Right. And so look at Mark chapter number 4. Let's just get right into it. Mark chapter number 4. We're going to start reading in verse number 35. And so Mark chapter 4 verse 35. The Bible says, And the same day when even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. Well, what does this mean? Well, if, if you look at uh, verse number 1 in chapter 4, when he began speaking in parables, uh, verse 1 says, And he began again to teach by the seaside, right? So Jesus is by the sea. And there was gathered to him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship uh, and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And so Jesus was uh, at this, at, by this, at, on a ship by the sea, right, teaching them parables. And in chapter, or in verse number 35, he says, in this, the Bible says, in the same day, right after this has happened, in the same day, when the even was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. Unto the other side of what? The sea, right? So he was in a ship. So now he's telling the disciples, hey, let's get away from the multitude and let's go over to the other side of the sea. And this is one of my favorite uh, uh, stories here of, of the life of Jesus. Uh, verse 36, And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him as he was in the ship. And there was also with him other little ships. And the Bible says, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. So, so Jesus says, hey, let's, let's, let's go in the ship, let's go to the lake, let's go on the other side. And, and, and it says, the Bible says that the, the, the waves be into the ship. And so the water was getting in the ship. And it, and it was a great storm going on. Right? This, this is a story that we're talking about. And it says, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves be into the ship, so that it was now full. Right? So this is what's going on. The disciples are losing their minds. Verse 38, And he was in the hinder part of the ship, right, the back side of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And so there was this great storm going on, right? The disciples are losing their minds. And what was Jesus? He was sleeping. He was, I love what the Bible says, asleep on a pillow, right? He's asleep on a pillow, right? He's having a nap. <laughs> and, the, and, and the Bible says, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, hearest Thou not that we perish. Carest, Master, carest thou not that we perish. And we'll talk about the rest in a little bit, how, how Jesus calmed the storm. But sometimes in our lives, a storm comes. And the storm comes that maybe we're not prepared for. 
And sometimes we ask God, God, do you care about me? Do you care about the storm going on in my life? And so I titled this message this, God, do you not care? God, do you not care? And the truth is, is that he does. God cares infinitely more than we could possibly imagine. But when situations in our life happen, it can feel to us sometimes that God doesn't care. But the truth is, is that, like we said, God does care, but he cares differently than we do. What do I mean by that? What I mean is, is that God's ways are not hit, uh, God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His concerns are not our concerns. And, and so, as Christian, as we go through uh, our Christian lives and we encounter storms, these these storms, these these, these trials, and, and these these times of uncertainty, these times of anxiety these times where we have doubt, these times where we don't know what's going on. We need to look at these storms from the right perspective. Not as babes, not as babes in Christ, and ask God, do you care? But, with, but look at things the way God looks at things. Jesus was not worried about the storm. Clearly, he was sleeping, right? And th there's more into that, and we'll, and we'll talk about it, right? But we need to start looking at things as mature believers, right? And, and so the, the question is, is how did they get there, right? Right, if the disciples are in a storm, right, a big storm is raging, you must ask yourself, how did I get here? And if you're in a storm in your life, you ask yourself, how did I get here? Look at verse 35. And the same day, when the eve was, even was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side, right? And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And it says, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so not so that it was now full. And, and so how, how did they get here? Well, they, they were following Jesus, right? Jesus had now been teaching parables and, and to, to the crowd, and, and now Jesus... Uh, told them to get in the ship and go on the other side. And up until this point, they had been following Jesus wherever he went. Jesus had uh, healed the sick. He had healed the man with the withered hand. He had uh, cast out demons. He had taught in the synagogue. They had been following Christ. And now they're come to a point in their, in their life when they're following Christ and they're doing what Jesus wants them to do by his command. Verse 35, the second half. Let us pass over on the unto the other side in, in verse 30 verse 37 there arose a great storm sometimes in life when we come to a storm we can come to a storm by following Christ understand that it, it is that so, sometimes we could be doing everything that God wants us to do and a storm comes in our life right and as we talked about the storm in our life uh, it, it represents fear Right? The disciples were scared. Right? Master, carest now thou that we perish? I, I mean, I, when I think of a storm, right? I, I don't go out uh, on ships very often. Um, and certainly not if I thought there was a storm coming or if there was danger of storm. But their lives were in danger. Right? I like my feet on solid ground. Right? If there's a hurricane... If there's a great rainstorm or something, I have shelter to run to, right? When you are in a ship, right, and when you are in the middle of the sea, when you're in the sea and a storm comes, there is nowhere to run, right? The Bible says that the water was coming in, and by this time, it was only a matter of time the disciples thought that the ship would capsize, that they would go under, that they would die. That, that, that is what was going on uh, in the disciples' lives. And, and sometimes, really, when we're going through a storm, uh, like the disciples, sometimes something happens in our lives. Or, or we're going through something, and we don't know the outcome, right? 
that, that's a fact. We, we, we don't know. We don't know tomorrow. We're not there yet. We don't know the outcome. And what we start to picture in our mind is the worst possible scenario that could possibly happen. What could be worse is that they all die. That's, that's where their minds went to. Hey, God, don't you care that I perish, that we perish? Master, cares not, uh, cares thou not that we perish? Right? And, and these doubt comes into our lives and fear and anxiety and all these things are present within in the storm. But we have a God who is with us in the storm. We, we have a God who is bigger than the storm. Who, 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 notice this, though Jesus was sleeping, he was ever so conscious and wary of their needs, right? Jesus, as God, had all full capability to take care of them. Jesus, as God, had full capability to get them out of that storm. But sometimes when we're in the middle of the storm, we can find ourselves asking the question, God, do you not care what I'm going through? And what we have to remember, what we have to understand when we think these things is understand that his ways are not our ways, right? God cares so much. Sometimes the reason why we find ourselves in a storm is the way is it's because of us. The problem a lot of times is our thinking, the way that we process the storm. So, so, and, and here, here's the way our mind works, and here's here's the way a, a human mind works, right? You're following God, you're doing what God wants you to do. You're showing up to church. You're going to work. You're working hard. You're taking care uh, of family. You're, you're doing all the things that, you know, God wants you to do. Then the storm hits, right? And w what happens when the storm, it casts a lot of anxiety, a lot of pain, a lot of doubt, a lot of fear, right? A lot of heartache. And then what, what do we want? We want the storm to stop. That is what we want. And so, but then we think, God is not stopping the storm when he can stop the storm. Therefore, I care about this, and God isn't doing what I want. Therefore, God doesn't care about me. That's what we think, right? I care about this. This is bothering me. God can stop it. God's not stopping it. Therefore, God doesn't care about me. What did the disciples say? Master, cares thou not that we perish, right? The disciples had to have known that Jesus would take care of them, right? They saw him heal people. They saw him teach in synagogue. They saw him take a stand for people who nobody else would take a stand for. They saw him eat with sinners. They saw the character and the power of Christ. But now they're doubtful. Now they are doubtful, right? Isaiah 55, 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, this is the comparison that we are given. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts, right? And, and so understand this, is, is the reason why we, com why we uh, complain and the reason why we don't think that God cares is because we are not looking at things the way that God looks at things. We know that God cares, but we know that his ways are not our ways. We know that he has a bigger plan. He sees the whole picture. We see a little bit of speck. That is what we see. What we don't see is, if this is what we see, what God sees is this whole room, right? And infinitely beyond, right? So we have to ask ourselves a question. What is more important in the grand scheme of things. Our temporal feelings, right? And really, that's a lot of times why we complain is, is God, I don't, I feel sad, or, or God, I feel anxious, or God, I don't know what's going on. And that's what we want God to alleviate. We, a lot of times we want God to alleviate 
our temporal feelings are a temporal circumstance. But God, in His perfect foreknowledge, in His omnipotence, uh, God has a perfect plan, and He is putting that perfect plan in action. And, and we know that God's plan is always about working towards the salvation of man, right? There, there was a divine encounter uh, a couple of days ago uh, uh, between Miss Leah and this man. They had no idea they would cross paths. But God had a perfect plan, a divine encounter. God's plan is always towards the salvation of man. So how is God using this in your life to reach somebody else? God is always in the business of bringing glory to his name. He is worthy of all praise. He is worthy of all honor. And we, in our minds, as we grow, as we mature, as we develop in our faith, we, we see and we, we acknowledge His glory. And God is always in the business of causing our hearts to draw closer to Him. Right? God is always in the business of saving people. He's always in the business of, of bringing glory to His name. And He's always in the business of drawing us closer to Him. Right? And, all, and these things have so much more importance have so much more uh, uh, eternal value than the temporal feelings that we want to alleviate, right? And really, when we get to heaven, right, that's, that's, when, we, that, that's when we will be, will be changed, right? We will, we will take on uh, these mortal bodies, right? We'll, become, it will, we'll take on immortality, and we become like Christ. We will be uh, glorified. And I think looking back, you know, We'll, we will say, hey, why did I care so much about this? Why was I not focused on God's eternal plan? Why was I not trusting God's eternal plan? All right, because understand that the same God who saved us, who, saved, who sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to save us, to bear the ultimate penalty, that is the same God who cares for us today. He does not change. The Bible says, I am the Lord, I change not. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, he, he is the same God. And, and so the apostles, like I said, they saw Jesus do all these great things. They saw him heal the leper. They saw him heal the paralyzed man. They, 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 they were called by Jesus Christ, had their lives set apart with a specific purpose, called them to be his apostles. They were following him. He for, he, he, he's willing to forgive us of our sins. And they saw all his great teachings and all these great things. But when the storm came, they questioned the character of God. When the storm came, no, they were trusting God before. They were trusting in Jesus Christ before. But when the storm came, they said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? When the, when the trial, when, when the storm came, they, they questioned his motive. And we are the same way. When, when, when the storm comes in our lives, you know, we tend to question, God, do you care? God, what is going on? And we ask ourselves these questions, right? And understand, God has not changed. The same God who has led you through all that is the same God who has taken you through the storm. The character of the Lord does not change. Circumstances around our life change, but the character of God does not change. He said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Right? Even when it seems that he's sleeping, and he was sleeping, Jesus was sleeping, the Bible says he will never leave us. Right. But the question is, you have to ask yourself the question, why was Jesus asleep? I, I mean, do you think it was a coincidence that he chose this time to take a nap, right? This, this, this day nap, <laughs> the storm was coming. Did he not know the storm was coming? Did it catch him off guard? Did he not know this? Did, did he lose uh, his, his perfect foreknowledge? Did Jesus lose this? No. So why was he sleeping? Right? Well, understand, Jesus sleeping is a representation. He was showing his disciples 
that even when it seems that God is not paying attention, even when it seems like God is not there, that God is still there. Jesus was waiting for the opportunity to get up and calm the storm. Right? He, 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 he's showing the disciples that even when it seems like God's not with us in the storm, that he is still in control. And we know that the apostles, they would go through a lot of storms. I think of uh, Peter and John. I, I think of uh, in the beginning of the book of Acts from Peter and John, where they were preaching the gospel in the synagogue. And when they were preaching the gospel, uh, we know that many people got saved, but what happened? After they healed that man, um, what happened? They were put, thrown in jail, right? And we might say, hey, God saved this person. God is working. But then, oh, no, <laughs> they were thrown in jail. What happened? Did God fall asleep? Oh, right? And, and, I, and I think about the time where Peter was arrested. And, and the, the disciples uh, were going through much persecution, and Herod took Peter and imprisoned him, right? I, I think of that time. I think of when John was sent to the uh, island of Patmos, where, where they were trying to do away with him, right? And, and John loved the Lord. And maybe it, it could have felt like maybe God is sleeping on me. But I, it, my mind just has to go back to, to this story. And I don't know what went through their heads at the time. But maybe they, they would have thought back to this moment where it seemed like their lives were coming to an end. And when it seemed like Jesus was sleeping, he was in control the whole time. And, and, and in our lives, right, it, may, it can seem like God is sleeping on us. But if we think back to all the times in our lives where we weren't sure and God got us through and God got us through in this time and that time and that time, what does that do? That reassures us that God is in control. God was in control yesterday, the day before, the day before that. He is still in control today. And, and the, the, the unfortunate part is that sometimes we have to learn this lesson time and time and time and time again. I, I think probably, and I say probably, there's a good chance that one of their greatest struggles of the apostles early on was when Jesus was crucified. And, 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 and what a dark time for the apostles. And we, we might say, well, they knew he would rise again. Well, let, let's not be so judgmental because sometimes God has to tell us something again, again, and again, and again, and again, and we don't get it. Right? But we know that Jesus rose again. And, and we know that their faith was ever so uh, strengthened. But what does it feel like in the moment? It feels like God was sleeping. It felt like Jesus uh, was sleeping on him. He, he, he was killed. So it, it felt like, hey, maybe God doesn't care anymore. But we know that is never the truth. The circumstances of your life never change the character of God. The circumstances of your life never change the character of God, who He is. He cannot change. He cannot change. And, and so, but what do we learn? What else do we learn in the storms? Well, the bigger the storm is in our lives, and the greater he pulls us out of it, the bigger, the greater we see our God. However uncontrollable the situation may be, God is still in control. Look at verse 39. When the disciples say, Hey, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Verse 39, He arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. 
And, I, and the disciples must have felt silly in that moment, right? And if God can get us, and they must have thought, if God can, if Jesus Christ has power over the winds and the waves, right? Verse 40, or verse, uh, I'll get to it, but if Jesus Christ has power over the winds and the waves, has power over all creation, created us, saved us, all of it, do not think that he has power over this situation in our lives? Right? Do we not think that he has the power, the ability to mend our hearts? Sometimes, where we go absolute, where we go wrong, is where we think that the storm is bigger than our God. Never is a storm bigger than our God. He, he created everything that we see around us, right? And we can oftentimes, really, when we doubt God. We say, hey, God, what are you doing? And when we lack faith, after we see God pull through, God always pulls through. We never pull through. We oftentimes feel silly for doubting God. Verse 40, And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How, how is it that ye have no faith? And really, when I read those words, I feel like he's talking directly to me. Christian, why are you so fearful? Christian, how is it that you have so little faith? The, 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 the circumstances do never, they, they, they might shake us, they might bother us, they might uh, uh, throw us, uh, we might feel like we're going, getting thrown to the wind uh, by the winds and the waves, but they never shake. They never wrap our God. But what we need to understand, what we need to realize and acknowledge, is what we need to do is we need to hold on to the faith that we have when God pulls us out of the storm. When God pulls us out of the storm, there is a great peace. When God pulls us out of the storm, we feel silly that we doubted him in the first place. When God pulls us out of the storm, we see him greater for who he is. So remember, hold on to the faith that you have when God pulls us out of the storm. Because when the next storm comes, remember, the same God that pulled you out of the last storm is the same God that's going, through, going with you in the storm today. And when, you, when he saves you, you begin to see God greater, more magnificent. See him for his magnificence. Verse 41. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Think, think, think about it. Now, now Jesus calmed the storm. And they were thinking, wow, what manner of, who, who is this guy? <laughs> that even the winds and the seas obey him. When God pulls us out of the storm, we think we should think, wow, how great is our God. Where, where he can use this situation in such a way and pull us out of it. And we, we, we should just exalt his name. And, and just and just see him for who he is. That that is God's part of God's purpose is for us to see his glory, to see God in a new light. So next time a storm comes, maybe you're in a storm today. Maybe you're in a storm today, or maybe you're not. Maybe you're in the calm of after a storm. But regardless, next time a storm comes. Remember what our God has done for us in the past. God, God constantly reminded the children of Israel. He said, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The God that pulled the, 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 the children of Israel out of bondage. We see him saying that again and again and again. What's he doing? He's reminding them who he is. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. We should remember what God has done next time the storm comes.
right? And, and we need to understand, we need to remember, we need to stop looking at our life. We need to stop looking at storm as babes and start looking at things the way God looks at them. He always has a plan. He's always in the business of saving folks. He's always in the business of drawing people closer to himself and bringing glory to him. His ways are eternal. Our minds focus on our temporal feelings. We need to start looking at things, understand, acknowledge, and look at things the way that God looks at things as mature believers. And remember, God cares about us so, so, so much. We need to lean on Him during the storms and, and acknowledge what they are doing in our lives. And understand, He is still in control from this day until our last day. From, it, from, from this, on this side of eternity and on the other side of eternity, God is still as in control today. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your message. Lord, help us to apply it. Lord, it, it's the simple truths of your word, Lord, that we need to hang on to. Lord, so that, that is my prayer tonight, Lord, that we hang on to the truth that you've given to us. Lord, that we see you for who you are and that we continue to see you for who you are. Lord, we need your help. Lord, I, 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 keep, I constantly acknowledge that, Lord. The more I grow, the more I realize I need your help. Lord, and, and I, I pray that you continue to keep us safe, continue to grow us, continue to strengthen our church, Lord. Continue to unify us in love in you. Father, we love you, and we're so thankful for all that you have done in our lives. Father, thank you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.